Ooh, who's the toughie? Hey, Smackdowns and evening gowns. Welcome back to the show. Today we are wrestling with the question, can a Christian get a divorce? I asked Sweet Bear this question as I was writing this video. Here's what she said. Uh, yeah. It's possible. And yes, that's true. Especially with divorce rates being so high in recent years, anybody can get a divorce anytime they want. As long as you're married. You need that part. But the question that we're really asking here is, is it permitted for a Christian to get a divorce? Is divorce a sin. And before we even start, I do want to say, I realize that for some of you watching this, this is not a, some intellectual or heady or even theological pursuit. For many of you, whether you have been divorced, struggling with maybe getting one, perhaps your parents are divorced, I realize that this is a very personal and emotional topic for a lot of people. And so while being truthful, I also want to be as respectful as I possibly can to those feelings and emotions. That being said, let's dive right in. Jesus' opinions and teachings on divorce are surprisingly well documented throughout the Gospels. And throughout all of these teachings, one thing remains crystal clear, and that is that God hates divorce. Now I know that sounds really harsh, and so I want to clarify and make sure you understand that when I say that God hates divorce, that's because God loves people. God hates brokenness because God loves reconciliation. His will and desire for us in everything we do is to always move towards restoration. Let's break this down. In Matthew chapter 19, the Pharisees approach Jesus asking him about the legality of divorce in accordance with God's law. But something we have to remember here is that when the Pharisees are asking Jesus this question, they're not actually interested in his answer. Rather, they are trying to trick him. They're asking this as a way to test him. And so understanding their motive, we can read Jesus' response not necessarily so much as an answer directly to their question, but rather an answer to their intention. Jesus first takes them back to the beginning and reminds them of God's original intention and design for marriage, for two to become one flesh. And it's interesting that in answering a question about why divorce is bad, Jesus starts by talking about why marriage is good. And I think this is actually the heartbeat of this whole passage. It's not necessarily that divorce is so bad or so sinful, but that Living within the bonds of a covenant marriage and the implications that has on our lives and on our faith, that is so good and so edifying that we should do everything we can to sustain it. Divorce should never be used as a convenience or as a cop-out. But the Pharisees come back and they challenge Jesus, quoting the law of Moses. And so Jesus reminds them that divorce was allotted through Moses because of hardness of heart or sin. But again, we see that he finishes, he concludes with reminding them that this was not God's original intention. Throughout the entire ministry of Jesus, we see that marriage, this covenant relationship is meant to be a metaphor for God and his church. And God's hope, his desire for each and every one of us is that through his son Jesus, that we would experience restoration and healing. And so therefore, the hope with all marital strife should be the same thing. Not for us to quickly divorce someone, therefore inviting brokenness in, but to fight with everything we have to push towards reconciliation. This means making a commitment to communicate with humility and openness with one another. It means to pray. It means to ask help from your community to seek spiritual counsel. The cost of maintaining a covenant relationship like marriage can be extremely high. 
And Jesus knew this as he was going to the cross. And that is exactly the type of sacrifice that we spouses need to model when fighting for our marriages. Selfless love, radical forgiveness, and the constant hope of reconciliation. Now, obviously, someone could hear words like, what God has joined together, let no man separate, and take that as an absolute statement that divorce is never, ever okay. However, elsewhere in scripture, we find evidence that there is quite a list of reasons under which divorce might actually be the only option. Again, the hope of all marital strife is to move towards the reconciliation God desires. But we also have to realize that every situation is different. And so therefore we must take those steps with wisdom, humility, and care. And if after all of that, after you have done all that work, you discover that divorce is the only option left, then I hope you hear this. While I do believe that God hates divorce, I believe even more that God loves divorcees. Getting a divorce could never, ever put us out of reach of the love of God. And we see this evidenced in scripture when Jesus speaks with the woman at the well. Even in the midst of our brokenness, God still desires that we would ultimately be reconciled to him so that we can live in a covenant relationship with our creator forever. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I know this is a very emotionally charged topic for a lot of people, so I thank you in advance for your grace while listening. I wanna say really quick, I know that along with the question of divorce, a lot of people have that question of remarriage. If a Christian has been divorced, is it okay for them to remarry? I promise I will be making another video on that coming up sometime in the future. I promise that's a question I want to answer on this show and I will do it for you. Last but not least, I want to tell you my Chicago show, my live show is coming up next week. Your chance to get tickets, your time is running out. You have to do it, please. I would love, 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 love and a double, double love to see you there. I really would. It's going to be a fantastic night. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, they are in the description down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at John Jorgensen. That's all I have for you this week. I'll see you on Wednesday for a day in the word. I love you all. Keep being awesome.